Hello, and welcome to Straight Talk Saturday. I'm Angela Atkins, and I'm here to welcome you and to tell you that these talks, I hope, will be beneficial to you, and leave comments, and please engage with me to let me know what you think about these topics I bring to you. Today, we're going to talk about not only ketogenic diet, but other low-carb, high-fat diets. And do they really work? And what is the whole scoop about this? But before we get into that, hey, Anne, how are you? Glad to see you've joined. Thank you so much. Hey, Emmanuel and John, good to see you here. I just want to start out by saying the first thing we need to understand is we keep using the word diet in everything we do. And there used to be a definition of it years ago that meant strictly the types of food we eat. And I'm going to read you the definition just to be exact what the dictionary says. A diet, the original noun of the word diet is the kinds of food that a person, animal, or a community habitually eats. Now that's what you would think diet should be. But what it has come across as being, we've changed it into a verb, and now we say it is a diet is when, how one restricts oneself to small amounts or special kinds of food in order to lose weight. So diets come to be associated with weight loss. Now, that's good and that's bad in the sense that if you always think of having to diet to get to a certain weight, you've completely modified your thinking about what diet really is. We really need to turn that on its head and go back to what the roots of it are. We need to think of dieting as proper nutrition. And unfortunately, in this world, um, especially Americans, we spend more than $60 billion annually trying to lose weight. So we're perpetually on diets. And so you follow a specific plan or a type of food. It focuses on what to eat, how to prepare them. And there, some of them have great support networks, which is good because if you are on a plan to lose weight, support and accountability is necessary. But here's the issue. 95% of diets fail people. It's not people who fail the diets fail. It's because when diets are created, they're, they're made for an average. So there may be a group of people that have tried this and they've gone through whatever the restrictions are or whatever the guidelines are to have this diet work for them and a percentage it will work for. And so because of that, that average is put into a diet book, a diet plan, whatever. And then it's sent out to the public and say, here's the latest and greatest diet, whatever it is. It could be, and I'm naming a few, and I'm not saying they're good or bad, but we know there's the DASH diet, the Mediterranean diet, there's ketogenic, Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem, Jenny Craig, all these things. It's because this average is formed around what works for most people. Now, in my practice, I have not yet met an average person. They are all unique. And because of that, dieting is a unique thing. And if we back it up and say, what do you need as an individual? It may be pieces and parts of different types of diets that are already out there. Hey, Rudy, I see you. Uh, uh, Don, Donna's here. Tom, hey, how are you? Good morning to everyone. So I just want to let you know the really important thing to remember is the latest diet that comes up may not be actually the latest thing. The ketogenic diet has, it seems to be the latest craze, but believe it or not, years ago, Dr. Atkins, great name, came up with a similar plan. Now, it has been modified over time, but Dr. Atkins' diet was basically low carbohydrate, high fat. It is one of the ones I tried when I was trying to lose weight too. Now, here's the thing, not everyone can go low carbohydrate and high fat. Not everyone benefits from it. Now there are certain things that are true. No one needs to eat refined carbohydrates. All those things that are processed and prepared and really provide very little nutrition for us. But as far as the concept of low carbohydrate, high fat, the concept is a good one. But let me tell you, there are plenty of people who cannot do this. 
um, a person who has pancreatitis is going to suffer immensely from high fat because the pancreas can't process it. So it has to be an individual thing. You need to understand what works for you. Now, the other part of what really concerns me about today's ketogenic diet, and I'm going to get on my soapbox right now, is different people get on and start proselytizing that this is the best and the greatest thing and you need to do it the specific way. And they go down that rabbit hole of making it not just a really good basis for a diet, meaning the idea is to restrict those carbohydrates that are not giving you the best value in nutrition. But now they're saying no carbohydrates, extremely high fat. And so you get these extremes of uh, advice and people get confused. It's really confusing. Any diet that causes deprivation or restriction are ones that are going to fail you. And by doing that, you will feel like you failed. And that's not the way to look at it. It's to take a step back and say, what pieces, what parts of these diets, what works for me? And so if you're adding in more fat to your diet, you may find that satisfies you more. And because of that, you're going to stay more likely stay on that path. Now, when it comes to restricting carbohydrates, I have seen and I have heard people on Facebook and other areas have said, oh, I eat no carbohydrates at all and I'm eating extremely high fat. Well, if you're eating no carbohydrates, to me that says you're eating no vegetables. And my first thing is your go-to has to be vegetables. You need those carbohydrates. They are the basis for healthy nutrition we must have those three macronutrients. We've got to have protein, we've got to have fats, and we have to have carbohydrates. But here's the thing, people get confused. It is so difficult to wade through this. It's like, well, which one is good and which ones are bad? It's very simple. Go back to whole foods. If it is an ingredient, a thing without a package, it is the right food. It is a whole food. If it's boxed and packaged and prepared and has a list of ingredients, it's not a whole food. It really is that simple. You don't need millions of diet books and plans and spend billions of dollars as we do in the United States to learn how to eat well. The whole point here is we need to get off of that diet roller coaster. Stop looking for the one thing that's going to make you feel better or you know, look good and lose those last 10 pounds. That's not the point. That is a social convention. We need to step back and say, why are we comparing ourselves to other people? Who cares if they've lost 10, 15 pounds doing ketogenic or any other low carb, high fat, or any other diet for that matter? Because any diet, will change your, your the way your body reacts. So if you're not eating a whole foods diet right now, and you're not giving your body the proper nutrition, and you change to any diet that is out there, because most of those diets have good sound principles to them. They say, you know, eat, drink more water, eat less refined sugar. Yes, you're going to lose weight. You're going to say, hey, I lost 10 pounds in you know tw two weeks or whatever it was because your body immediately responds to that change. You're like, hey, you're not eating the other crap food, which is what I call carbonated beverages, refined sugar, uh, additives and, and preservatives and processed foods. If you're not doing that, your body immediately reacts saying, hey, I don't have to process all that other stuff. I'm gonna get rid of this fat. And that's what happens. So any diet is gonna look like it's gonna work for you. Sustaining it is the problem. When you go on these diets that say you need to do, you know, X number of meals or a certain amount of points or counting, measuring, it's too confusing and it's just not sustainable. And that's why the diet fails you. You don't fail the diet. The diet is not giving you a way to live within. For me, it's very simple and it's, I've spent years doing it so it doesn't happen overnight. I eat when I'm hungry and I don't get hungry if I eat the right foods that I need. So if I'm eating a whole foods diet, it means I'm having plenty of vegetables. I eat animal protein, not everybody does, but I do because I need it. 
I find myself eating plenty of fat, so it makes me feel satisfied after a meal. So in order to do this, I had to figure out what works for my body. And that's where these diet plans don't work. If they're not working with what your unique biochemical needs are, they're going to fail you. So whether it's ketogenic or any other diet, you're going to have to examine how does that make my body feel? So if you go down the ketogenic path and you find, hey, I'm losing weight, this is really good, that's fine. But respond to the other things that your body is saying. Do you feel less energy or do you feel more energy? If you feel more energy, then it's sustaining you. Do you get stomach pains or do you feel gassy or bloated at some point? Well, maybe there's something in that package of food that you're eating that you need to now dissect and figure out what exactly is that food saying to me? Because that's really all what food is. It's information. That information, every bite you take, tells your cells something. And if it's telling your cells the right stuff, then the cells are going to function properly. If it's not saying the right thing, meaning that your body just isn't agreeing with what the food is doing to you, then you just need to listen to that message. And so for many of us, that's the most difficult part stopping and listening to what our body says because we're rushing and we're rushing and we're just using food as a side thing you know I'll, I'll eat when I can or we eat so often we never give our bodies a chance to rest and tell us what's going on we're constantly processing foods so what I'm saying about ketogenic is yes it has some really good basic facts to it but it's not going to be the be-all, end-all for everyone. And here's the reason why. You have to listen to your body. So if your body says when you're eating that way, if you're going low carbohydrate, high fat, how, does it, how do I respond? Is my body getting what it needs? Am I not feeling hungry very often? Well, that's a good thing because your body needs time to process food. So this concept of some diet saying eat every three hours or eat you know, six meals a day, that may be good for some people who have that unique biochemistry. I would say not for the masses who are healthy. If you are healthy, you don't need to eat every you know, six, seven meals a day. Your body just never rests then. So with ketogenic, the positive part is that you eat less often, you feel more full. So if you're going to try a diet, which again, I'm not proposing anyone that's better than the other, think about what it does. Ketogenic is to make you feel full and to satisfy you so you're not looking for the next meal. You're not thinking about food all the time because you've removed those refined carbohydrates. Again, when it says low carbohydrate, I really wish it would spec specify what kind of carbohydrates are good and what kind are not. Most people just go out there and say no carbs or low carbs, and they fail to recognize that we must have carbohydrates as our macronutrients. We have to have them. Our bodies crave them. We're built to have them. So if you don't have carbohydrates at all, you are lacking in something and you will feel deprived, you will feel restricted. But giving yourself carbohydrates that are going to feed your body, those healthy vegetables, those brightly colored vegetables that are gonna give you many, many more nutrients than some packaged product. And that's where I feel like Dr. Atkins was on the right track, but since he's been gone, what I've seen is that diet has veered off to packaged meals and products that they think it's so easy for you to just pick up and go. Well, what happens with that is you lose your individual choice. You think, oh, well, I've got many choices out here. I've, you know, I've got chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, whatever. That's not the choice I'm making. Now your choices are which one of the refined carbohydrates, which one of the prepared products do I choose, rather than going into a grocery store or a CSA or a farmer's market and saying, what colorful thing am I going to fill myself with? Am I going to get the brightly colored orange vegetables or the purples or, or the bright green? You need all those colors because one thing we know is that the body responds directly to what we see. 
You'll notice these packages are brightly colored with exciting words on them, you know, low calorie, which let me just tell you, means nothing, so forget that. Then you'll see something else that has beautiful pictures or great things, and it just attracts the eye. This is all marketing. You have to retrain yourself to look at these things because the eye is very pleased by beautiful food. You go in and you see a lovely eggplant. It's, it's gorgeous in itself. It's beautiful purple color. It can do so much more for you than a simple bar in a package. So you need to rethink what all this means. Do I want to eat all the fat I can? No, not necessarily. You want to need eat the fat that you need. So for you, maybe it's similar to what I do. I have a half of an avocado every day in something. And believe it or not, it's part of my dessert. So I make sure I get dessert every day, but it has a good fat in it. So I make a, I make a mousse with an avocado in it, and I use raw cacao, so it tastes like chocolate. I never feel deprived because I'm giving myself those healthy fats that I need. So you're wondering, do I do keto? I'll say no, I don't do keto because I don't follow any diet. I follow what my body says. Does it have keto principles? Probably does because I don't eat refined carbohydrates. There are none in my diet. I eat virtually no grains, but that's because of my personal situation. Many of you know I have celiac disease. So for me, it's a lot easier to stay away from all those grains because not only does the wheat, barley, and rye cause the problem with celiac, but there are some things called molecular mimicry that your body may take other grains or other products that thinks it's the same kind of grain, the same kind of molecule that is fighting, that autoimmunity is fighting against in celiac disease. So for me, it was easy to eliminate them. I have a medical reason. A lot of people don't have that, so they don't think, well, it may cause a stomach upset or I feel bloated or gassy. Well, they are typical signs that your body is rejecting it. It may not seem to be a big deal, and many people say, oh, that's normal for me, but it's not normal. Even if you think it's normal for you, it's just not normal. And here's the reason why. Your body is sending you that signal, that signal that says, yeah, I'm not processing it well. Can you not do this anymore? And yet we keep giving it over and over again. So what happens eventually is that the body does something else. For me, what it did is it told me I had celiac disease by giving me worse and worse pains until I had to go and get, and get diagnosed with celiac disease. Now, that's an extreme. There's a small percentage of the population that has celiacs, but there are plenty of people who have intolerances, and we choose to ignore them. And why? Because we'll say, well, I'm on this diet, and it says I can have all these things, and I'm going to have them. And it's because if we don't have them, we feel deprived. We need to get out of that mindset. Stop feeling deprived. Give yourself real food that makes you feel great. I mean, if you're eating well, there is no reason why you're not going to feel well. And it helps in the long run because what happens is when you start feeling better, your life actually gets better. You start seeing things in a different way. It's a whole body experience. We're not just the food we eat. It's not possible to say that because some food is not giving us what we need. We are what we can absorb and digest. So everything you eat, no matter what diet style it is, has an effect on you. And that effect can be positive or it can be negative. It can actually be neutral too, but in some sense, it's going to have some impact on you. And whatever that impact is, all I say is start listening. Your body is telling you something. So if you're going to follow the latest ketogenic, I say do it with open ears. Be aware. Is that food giving you some sort of response that you need to do something about? And if it doesn't serve you, try something else. You do not have to follow a diet. You have to follow what nutrition works for you. The concept of ketogenic is good, and for a large majority of people, if they remove refined carbohydrates, all those things that really are not giving you any nutrition, and increasing healthy fats, we need to put those descriptors in. Reduce refined carbohydrates, increase 
healthy fats. They're the basis for a good diet. But what you need to remember is you do need all those different elements. You need those three macronutrients. You absolutely have to have some form of protein. You have to have carbohydrates and you have to have fats. And that's just the macronutrients. Don't forget, you have to have micronutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, the trace elements. You're not going to get all of them from packaged and prepared meals. There's an, it's almost impossible to cram those full of everything you need. So if you're eating prepared foods every day because there's some diet that says you should eat them, I suggest you think again. It doesn't matter if it's a ketogenic diet or any kind of diet that's been out there for years. If it's packaged and it's processed, it is not getting you where you need to be. You need to eat whole foods. You need to listen to your body and say, is this giving me what I need? So I ask you now, if you've tried ketogenic diet, post below. Let me know how it's working for you. As I said, I've tried it. I still use principles of it. I don't use it exclusively as a diet. Principles are good, and I think you can build on them, but there are other things that you need. Tell me how your experience has been with keto or other diets that you've tried, and I'd love to respond to any questions that you have. Feel free to post them in the comments below, and I ask you, share this with other people. You may have family members or friends or just people that you've heard talking about dieting, and let them know if diets don't work, it's not them failing. It's the diet failing them. So give it a try. Try whatever one you think works best with your body. I think ketogenic is close. It just needs to be very defined for you. You need to lose those refined carbohydrates and add in the healthy fats. But don't forget, don't overdo anything in the process. That doesn't mean eat as much protein as you possibly can. That doesn't mean eat as much fat as you possibly can. It means eat what you need. And the only way you know what you need is if you stop and listen to what your body says. If you're eating in a rush, eating while you're doing something else, or eating any time that is not your sole purpose, you're gonna miss those cues. You're gonna miss when you're full. You're gonna miss if it's gonna give you a problem, and that problem could last maybe right away, it could happen right away, or it could take 20 minutes, a couple hours, but you need to be aware, because if you're eating every couple of hours, you're not going to be aware if the last meal caused a problem, because now you're eating something else. So take time, slow down. Don't worry about what it says, is, is it a diet? Worry about, is it a whole food? Is it sustaining you? Are you eating enough to make you feel satisfied? If you're not eating enough, that may be the problem that you're not losing weight too. If you deprive yourself, it's going to be a difficulty for you to overcome mentally. If you are restricting yourself, it may be a problem for you to overcome physically. So what you need to do is stop depriving, stop restricting, start eating well, low carbohydrate with plenty of carbohydrates in vegetables. You can almost not overeat vegetables. I don't know anyone who overeats vegetables. And add in fats, but don't overdo fats either. Combine that with really solid protein, and there's your diet. It's your proper nutrition. You don't need anybody telling you what to eat every single second of the day. Your body knows. You just need to start talking and listening. Give it what it needs, listen to the response, and then follow the cues. Thank you everybody for showing up. I am so glad you're here with me. Please share this with people that you think could be beneficial, they could be beneficial for, because I want everybody to know it's not dieting that's important. It's nourishing your body. So join me again next Saturday. I'll have another straight talk for you. No BS, straight to the point. Doesn't matter to me who, who sells what or what they're making money at. My goal is to give you the real truth, because right now, there's too much mess out there, too much confusion. Stay tuned for the next one, and I'm always open to your suggestions, your comments, and I welcome you all to Your Health Unbound. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.